uh, as important a hearing as we're going to have when I'm uh, in Connecticut, um, especially as a parent of two school-age kids myself, um, I, I know that nothing causes parents to tear their hair out more um, than uh, dealing with the increasingly unaffordable cost of childcare and the relative unavailability of quality childcare options uh, today. Um, I, we are a family that can uh, afford care for our kids, um, and yet it, you know, frankly takes up hours and hours every week just trying to arrange that care and, and make sure that it's there. Um, so let me just delve into two subjects that I wanted to touch on today, and I thank you all for your tremendous testimony and, and work in, the, in this critical field. Um, first to you, Ms. Cashin, um, I want to talk a little bit about the employer's perspective um, on the investment that we are contemplating. Um, in Connecticut, um, we have a lot of major companies that have, you know, frankly asked the state legislature for a big public sector commitment to child care. Um, you know, just a handful of them that have testified recently in Connecticut, Bigelow OT, General Dynamics, Electric Boat, uh, Boehringer, Hartford Healthcare. Um, you know, 124,000 parents of young kids in Connecticut said in a recent survey that we believe that 124,000 parents have testified that their work has been disrupted by child care issues. And employers see this too, their inability to recruit good talent because of the lack of availability of child care. I remember meeting one young woman, a parent of two, who was out of the workforce simply because she couldn't find care for her youngest child. And of course, that story can be replicated um, you know, literally millions of times over. People who are out of the workforce for one reason only, because they can't find childcare, that hurts them, but it also hurts employers too. So what's employers take on the status of childcare affordability and how it impacts their bottom lines? Senator, that's exactly right. There is a huge push by business leaders to invest, for, for Congress to invest in childcare. And that's because they know that business disruptions cost a lot of money, you know, childcare related business disruptions. The report that I just did with the Center for Economic Policy Research found that across the nation, we could gain $60 billion in economic activity by reducing those childcare related business disruptions. So that's a lot of money. But the other thing is it's just a very personal piece too. I think about Jessica and Jason Morrison in Pennsylvania who, Jessica works full time, they have two kids. Jason has been home during the day taking care of their kids and he works for Uber and Lyft at night and on weekends. So basically, you know, they are not really seeing each other. Um, he was offered a great job. He was very excited. The employer was so excited to have him. They could not find or afford childcare. They found wait lists. They found blocks every chance they got. And so he had to say no to that job. And that's what's happening a lot around the country for dads, for moms who cannot do the work they want to do because they don't have access to affordable childcare. I think it's important to put it in that broader economic uh, context. Um, second question. Um, I wanted to drill down on a, on a particular time of the year that's really tough for parents. And I'll, I'll pose this question to Ms. Evans uh, Alvin on behalf of the industry, but I know others could answer as well. Um, as uh, Senator Murray uh, knows, I've spent a lot of time on this committee talking about the importance of good summer programming for kids. I, I thought it would have been a mistake to just send kids back to summer school last year. I thought that they needed um, a little bit more sort of holistic and comprehensive care. Um, but parents will tell you that summer is the nightmare. Um, and the amount of time and energy they spend trying to get their kids in good care and the amount of income that they forego during the summer is really extraordinary. A recent survey suggested that 57% of families said that at least one parent made a sacrifice during the summer to care for kids that involved a reduction of income. That's catastrophic for families that are living paycheck to paycheck. Um, what's the particular barriers that families face during the summer, and how can the proposals that we're considering help? 
Yeah. Senator, I can tell you from personal experience with three children that the summer is a nightmare and I, I get nervous as we, every time we start planning for what the activities will be in the summer and how we're going to figure it out and wing it, as most families do. And that is why the idea of full day, full year care, birth to five is really important. We don't solve this problem with just a part day program or just a small investment. We solve it when it's full day, four year, full day, full year care, and that is the notion of both keeping kids safe while their parents work, which happens in a full year, and maximizing on, on what we know, the science of high quality early childhood education. You really look at, I, Ellen might have mentioned this, but look at also how the field has responded over the last two years with the pandemic. And other than a brief shutdown at the beginning of the pandemic for public health reasons, childcare has largely been open and have made, childcare providers, early childhood educators have made Herculean efforts to ensure that children are safe, that it's a safe environment, but it's still that it's a high quality early learning environment. And we've watched that happen. They've done it on shoestring budgets. Um, and it's just, that's not fair. It's not fair. And we send the wrong message to them when we do that. I also just want to take a minute to address the question about cost to families. I'm not sure where we're getting the statistics that this is going to increase costs by $13,000 to families. And in fact, it's free for three and four-year-olds. It's pre-K that is free for three and four-year-olds. And what I have seen, the cost estimates that I have seen, um, goes as far as for a, fa a family of earning $130,000 a year to drop costs by $13,000. So I just think we need to get clear on kind of the impact that we'll have and make sure that we're aligned on the math that we're using. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.